Paul described Jesus as the end of the law. What does that mean? We'll explore that and more right now on Sabbath School U. Guys, we've got a good study ahead of us. Let's just uh, quickly run down the line and introduce ourselves. Hi, I'm Erica. I'm from Maryland. I'm John, and I'm from uh, Los Angeles, California. Okay. And I'm Brittany, and I'm also from Maryland. All right, well, let's do this, guys. We, before we dive in, let's, uh, we'll look at our memory verse. Read that, Erica. I'll ask you to just read our, our key text for today, and then we'll go into prayer. Sure. Romans 10.4 says, For Christ is the end of the law, so that there may be righteousness for everyone who believes. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for bringing us together today and giving us the opportunity to learn more about you um, by learning from each other and what we can pull from Scripture. We ask that your presence be with us today and always and that we reflect you in everything we say and do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 So we have kind of a heavy topic. It's the law. So before we get into end of the law and Jesus and all of that, what, what are some concepts that you guys have when you think of the law? What's like a shotgun reaction you have? What pops in your head? Ten Commandments is the first thing. Ten Commandments. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what are, what are your, what's your thoughts about it, about the law? Is it, is it something that is strict? Some people view it as a burden. Some people say we've been released from it. What, what comes to your head? I think right off, I think of it as being kind of restricting. I mm. think I kind of equate law with rules. Yeah. Those two words kind of um, connect for me. Um, but after studying this lesson, I, I right. see it differently. Right, right. So. But we do think that a lot. We think law, I think breaking the law. Mm -hmm. And what happens mm -hmm. when you break it? You know, that's, that's the Pen first thing that comes to my head. Penalty, penalty, judgment, right. condemnation, mm -hmm. something like that. It, it seems like we, we do need to have a good sense of, first, what is the law before we start asking what is the end of it? And then what does that mean? Mm -hmm. you know? So if we look at our text, it says, for Christ is the end of the law, so that there may be righteousness for everyone who believes. We know right off the bat, okay, so we don't get righteousness through the law. We get righteousness through believing. That's what Paul's mm -hmm. saying in Romans. So then what, what then is the law's function? Is the law gone? Has it been thrown out? Mm -hmm. Why not, no. John? I think it's more of that Christ fulfilled the law. Yeah. Christ kept the law, was able to keep, mm. keep the law. It's more of the uh, end as in the end goal. Right. Mm. Because, I mean, a lot of people do make that argument. Well, you know, that's mm -hmm. why Sabbath is on Sunday now because mm -hmm. the law is different. We don't do a lot of things that, we, that maybe the Jewish uh, uh, Israelites used to do we, the, because it's the end of the law. But we, we wouldn't say that that's the case, or, or is it? You know, no, I I'll, think, I'll, I'll, okay, go ahead, Brittany. I think it still applies, um, even though we're not living in that, that era of the Israelites. Um, it definitely still applies to us. And... And it shouldn't be primary. And, you know, I think um, following Jesus Christ and, and accepting His grace as our salvation is the first thing. Mm. And then because of that, that results in um, not just abiding by the law, but actually wanting to abide by the law. Awesome, awesome. You know, we see in, if someone could jump to Matthew, um, we have in Matthew 5:17. Um, Jesus says the exact thing that, that you were just saying, John. And whoever gets to it first, just. Uh, just call out with it is uh, Matthew 5, 17. Sure, I'll read it. Um, I'm reading from the New Living Translation, so it might mm -hmm. be different a little bit. Uh, Matthew 5, 17, do not misunderstand why I have come. I did not come to abolish the law of Moses or the writings of the prophets. No, I came to accomplish their purpose. Mm -hmm. So he didn't come to abolish it. Mm -hmm. He came to mm -hmm. fulfill it, to accomplish mm -hmm. their purpose. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times we do get this kind of there's the Old Testament God and the New Testament God. There's, you know, what happened then, but that's all over now. Jesus completely changed everything. While he may f have fulfilled it, he certainly didn't abolish it. We don't, we don't throw it all out. So then we do get to the question of if the law still remains, it hasn't been abolished, then what is its function? And uh, Do you guys have an example of it? Does the law play a role in your personal life? Sure. I think it does. I think... When you, even if you just look at the Ten Commandments, if you look at them, the basis is really, I think, to protect us mm. and also to protect others. Mm -hmm. their, to, to respect their, their rights, um, their life, yeah. um, and in, in doing so, you live a better life that mm. way. A lot of people do it differently. They think it's there to curse you, to put right. a burden mm -hmm. on you. To restrict to, you. To restrict <laughs> you, exactly. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Right. No, I think it's, it's freeing in that sense, but that can be the other side of the coin, too, in that if you just say, well, if I just do this, if I just live by these ten right. rules, I'll be set. Right. And that's not the case. It's interesting. We find, like, when you explore this issue, we can go to 
different sides of it. It's almost like a, a line we need to walk. You could be all about the law, just about the law, I'm gonna make myself righteous through works in the law, but Paul says that's not the case. Or it could just be, oh man, you just gave me this grace, I'm just gonna go run and do my thing, the law's been thrown out. So we, we kinda need to, I guess today is about finding our way, you know, where, where is that middle ground? Let's, let's jump now to Romans 3.20. It's the beginning of Romans. Paul, uh, Paul is kinda setting up one of his arguments, and one of the first things he does is kind of setting up what, what is the law, what, what, what's its function now? And so it, wh whoever has that, Erica, could you, could you please read that for us? Therefore, no one will be declared righteous in his sight by observing the law. Rather, through the law, we become conscious of sin. Okay, mm -hmm. let's unpack that, the two parts. There's two parts. There's we cannot make ourselves righteous through works in the law, and then through the law, we become conscious of our sin. It, I wonder if you can unpack that first part a little bit. What does it mean that, what, what, why, why is it there? Is it setting a, a, a standard I can't reach? Is this like a double standard that God is setting for me that to, to set a bar that is too high? Is, is that what's going on with the law? I think it's probably saying that the law is high, mm -hmm. but at the same time, the, I'll take you there. Right. You know, it's, it's a different type mm -hmm. of thing where it's, he's saying, like, listen, here's the law. It's kind of, I don't know, I, I view the law as a type of a mirror that shows you the right. stains on your face. Right. Mm. But at the same mm. time, you know, I, I don't, the mirror doesn't cleanse, cleanse mm. my face or anything like mm. that. I have to wash it out. So it, it's a, you know, it, it, the law is there to show you that, hey, you're speeding. Hey, you're, 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 right. this is why you're going to prison. Or right. This is why you're, you're, you're um, getting the penalty. Right, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, that's, that's an awesome point because really it's there. It's just to make us conscious of our sin. And, and I see now why, you know, that, that could be a good thing if I, I, I want to improve. Maybe I'm not going to reach perfection. Maybe mm -hmm. me reaching perfection is not the point right now mm -hmm. as far as what I can do. Mm -hmm. But it is setting, it's, it's making me aware of my own condition. So would it be, am I hearing you correct, John? If, it's, if, it, if the law highlights my sin, is it even possible to fully keep the law? Is that what it's there for? Is that its function? I think it's, it's you know, again, it's all about Jesus. You know, mm -hmm. it's all about Jesus in a way that it's in, it's impossible for human beings to always keep the law, yeah. but because of Jesus, he 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 takes us and um, and gives us grace to be able to meet up to that point. Mm. You know, he he fulfills it, and and he he's the only person that was able to keep it right. perfect. Mm -hmm. Right. You right. know, and even into heaven, I don't I don't think we'll until we get to heaven. I don't think that we'll be as perfect as human beings to be able to right. keep the law. And I think it's cool that notion that God, if God wrote the law and Jesus was God, mm -hmm. then of course you know. The law is just an expression of him, mm -hmm. you know, so he's able, mm -hmm. he's able to keep it, mm -hmm. you know. So I, what I feel like you're saying is the, the law then highlights my need for Jesus then. Mm -hmm. that, that's what it does. Mm -hmm. So then where, where do I go from there the, mm -hmm. if, I, if, if, that's, if that's what the law is highlighting? Mm -hmm. I think it, if you're quoting it that way, then the law not only, the, the penalty is sin is death, mm -hmm. correct? But the Bible right. says the, the penalty is the sin is death. Sin is wages death. of sin mm -hmm. is death. And so if that's the case, then... Who can save us? Mm. Only but Jesus right. can save us. Who right. lived a perfect life. Exactly, who lived a perfect life. Right, right. And I, it's something we see in Romans that the law was really never, it's not the thing that saves us. It just highlights that we need saving. Mm -hmm. you know? right. And so I think right. when you want to throw that out, we said, no, this is a mirror. This is something that shows, shows what I need, mm -hmm. the needs that I have in my life. So I, I, I want to jump on something that, um, that Paul talks about. He says that it was the sin of Adam really, that we are born into that. You know, there's something in us that, that is almost inescapable, and the law highlights another way, God's goodness. So let's, let's jump to Romans 5, 15. Brittany, if I can ask you to read that, please. And then we'll go to 18. Romans 5, I'm jumping there myself. Romans 5, 15. But there is a great difference between Adam's sin and God's gracious gift. For the sin of this one man, Adam, brought death to many. But even greater is God's wonderful grace and his gift of forgiveness to many through this other man, Jesus Christ. And can you read 18 also? Okay, verse 18 says, Yes, Adam's one sin brings condemnation for everyone, but Christ's one act of righteousness brings a right relationship with God and new life for everyone. Mm -hmm. So if I'm born, if you're born into something that you don't want to be in, then what, what's the next step? You know, if, if, I, if, I need, if I want to join in something else, you know, we, there's a term in Christianity that is thrown around a lot called born again. Mm -hmm. You know, I wonder if we can unpack how that relates to this, the, the born again experience. You know, for instance, if I'm going to be born again, we're born into, we're born into death in Adam. 
you know, I want to be born into the life that Jesus has to offer. And I, and I think that's kind of what, what we talk about when we're talking about being born again. I mean, is, is being born again like a, like a one-time experience? Is it something I got to do every day? Uh, what, what does a born again experience mean in your life? I think it's definitely something that needs to be done every day yeah. um, because we're reminded that you know this ongoing battle between Christ and Satan is it's a daily battle mm. um, and every single day we need to commit ourselves to which side we're going to be on mm. and so to be born again in, in Jesus Christ um, will help us through that daily battle and, yeah. and help right. us be on the right side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know there's, or John you were going to say something? I like how you brought up that uh, there's death and there's being born again Yeah. and uh, Paul writes that uh, I died with I, I sin and I, it's, yeah. I, I die daily. Right, mm -hmm. right. And uh, I like how you put that death daily. Right, if I want to be born reborn again. into this mm -hmm. new thing, I got to die, you know, because it's just because there's a notion out there, I think we, you know, the one saved, always saved type of thing, uh, it almost kind of cheapens mm -hmm. what Jesus did. Yeah. It cheapens the severity mm -hmm. of, our, of our situation, this, this whole notion of, you know, one saved, always saved, and then, and then that's it. But, but, I mean, it's a daily thing. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, we need, uh, Martin Luther said, uh, we need the gospel every day because we forget it every day. You know, it's just part of, part of who we are. Um, let's see, let's jump here to Romans 5. Oh, we have that. It's, we just talked about it. You know, the one, one more thing I want to highlight about that is it sounds, the beginning of the verse that we read, it, it sounds like really bad news at first. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's, it's actually really mm -hmm. bad news followed by really good news. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the bad news is there's something fundamentally wrong with you. Mm. Like you were born into it. Like you, it's not even your fault, mm. <laughs> you know? Like think about that. Like that, that's what Paul is saying. Like because of Adam is why you are how you are. And there's, you know, that's just it. You were born into it. There's nothing you can do. Well, there is something you can do about it, but, but there's nothing you could have do, done about that original just being born into it. And then it's followed by just amazing news, which is, you know, but now die to self mm -hmm. and go to Jesus. And then you have this awesome news where you, you become born again. And now we have this, awesome grace that was passed mm -hmm. out. But I, then, then it's where we kind of go to the other side. We talked about being on two sides of this. You know, I wonder if we talk a little bit about this notion of cheap grace. Um, what, what does cheap grace mean? And how does it tie to this? Because there are a lot of people that out there that just, well, you know, God is gracious and throw out the law and we can do whatever we want now. It's almost like taking advantage of the grace that we've been giving, right. given to right. me. It's like taking advantage of it and saying, well, you gave it to me, I took it once, thanks, now I get to do what I want to do. Right, mm -hmm. right, right. And that's where the law also comes into play mm. with, with grace. I just want to follow these set, you know, this set of guidelines or it's not one or the other. It's mm. not follow the set of guidelines mm. or I, I took grace, thanks. It, it, they go hand in hand. Mm. Because of that grace that's shown to you, you want to follow the law and you, you struggle within yourself like Brittany said, mm -hmm. daily. It's right. a daily choice. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I think, you know, when we start to get that grace, we start to get a different picture of the law as well because so often the law is an ugly thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's this thing that has death and condemnation and judgment or whatever. But, I mean, how do, we, how do I personally get into that mindset of the law is actually a beautiful thing? Is that a possible? Can I, how do we get into that mindset? Mm. I mean, is it something you've ever experienced? You know, this, uh, this battle that so many Christians seem to have with how do I view the law? Absolutely, and I think it takes a, a daily connection um, with Christ to yeah. to look at the law and to know, you know, Jesus Christ lived this. He he lived through the same life that we're living, mm -hmm. and he was able to to not even be, be tempted by these things. Mm -hmm. And that's an incredible thing. Yeah. Um, and so to have that kind of relationship with him, that you want you want to be able to reflect that image in mm -hmm. those around you, and to know that you know, starting with the, these Ten Commandments and, and the law that He's given us um, is how we can achieve that here. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting that, you know, I like what you said, Erica, about sometimes we think that, that the law is something, or, or that we, we react to grace and we just, well, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do whatever I want now. But that's not really, you know, grace isn't just given, boom, and you just go and run what you do with it. I wonder if we can take a look at Romans 5, the beginning of Romans 5, Romans 5, 1 and 2, which is right where we are. And what, what does it say there? Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand, and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. So how do we get, how do we get access to the grace? What does uh, verse 2 say? Faith. Through faith. Through mm -hmm. faith. So it's not even, I think, you know, to me, that's the thing that kind of tears apart this whole cheap grace mm -hmm. thing that we hear so much. That it's not, it's just here, go do your thing. I came so I could start lawlessness or something. Mm -hmm. That doesn't seem to be what Jesus came to do. So 
if, if, if it's through faith, then what is, what's the impulse? I wonder if we could each talk about what, what is the impulse in your personal life that leads you to have faith in Jesus? It's, it, sometimes I feel like we just tell someone, look, you need to believe in Jesus, but we don't give them the why, you know, or we don't, we, we, they go, okay, I, but who is, I don't know, you know, so what, what about our personal experience? What, what leads us to have faith in Jesus? What is that impulse that draws us to him? I think for me, it's even at the lowest of the low, I think, you know, Satan's lie to us is, Sometimes you're too bad to ever go back. Mm -hmm. You've mm. gone too far and you yeah. can't come back. Jesus tells you you're never too far gone. Yeah. So even at the lowest of the low, he, he provides comfort and the sense of peace. And talking about sharing your faith, that's a hard thing to put into words yeah. unless you've gone through it. But if you can share that with someone, mm. I mean, there's no greater experience. He loves you through your worst. Yeah, yeah. It seems to be, I mean, that's the thing that really, and you said that he loves you. I think, I think to me, that's the thing that, that pulls us into our faith. You know, 1 John 4, 19 says, we love because he first mm -hmm. loved us. Mm -hmm. And then now we're drawn into that faith, and then we receive, and, we receive this and grace. it's interesting how you say that, because the law, when you focus on the law, mm. and you see how the law that points out sin, mm. and if you actually take time and reflect on how much you've sinned, mm. and then... Right. You see how much God has covered yes. for you? Yeah. Yeah. That's when your love grows. Right. And, and, and the thing is that if you take away the law, yeah. how do you know how much mm -hmm. God loves you? Wow. It's impossible. That's, that's awesome. What, if I think I understand you, what you're saying is the law, by seeing how much I fall short of it, shows how big God's grace and God's mm -hmm. love is. And that's incredibly powerful. And so why, would then, why then would I want to get rid mm -hmm. of that thing? Mm -hmm. Why would we want to do away with it? Mm -hmm. But we do see how it is nothing mm -hmm. without tied to the mm -hmm. faithfulness in Jesus Christ. Ultimately, it's an empty thing. I, I do what, you know, Paul does this thing in Romans where he'll, he'll go back and forth. Like he'll show, you know, the law. No, it's, it's, it's done. Jesus is the end of the law. But, and then he'll go to the other side. So I want to, we're going to swing the pendulum to the under, other side now. Let's go to Romans. Uh, we'll each read a different one. Uh, Eric, if you could read Romans 6, 12, and then John Romans 6, 15 to 18, and then uh, Brittany, if you could read Romans 6, 23, and we'll just go down the table. 6.12, therefore do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. Mm. Uh, what, what Paul seems to be highlighting here is that separating the law from sin, you know? Oh, great, the law is, is ended, but that's, that, that doesn't deal with the sin part. You still have that sin part in you. Right. So that we, we still find ourselves, you know, battling with that. So certainly we don't want to throw that away. Um, John, I see you struggling on your phone here. Should I, should I jump in here? Skip me for All that. right, I'll take 15. <laughs> um, what then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? By no means. Don't you know that when you offer yourself to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves to the one you obey, whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that though you used to be slaves to sin, you have come to obey from your heart the pattern of teaching that has now claimed your allegiance. You have been set free from sin and become slaves to righteousness. Mm -hmm. What on earth does that mean to be a slave to righteousness? Mm -hmm. If I'm set free, how could I be a slave to righteousness? Mm -hmm. I think it's like anything, once you know that something exists for your good, okay, you can be a slave to a <laughs> diet. Like, mm. Can't you? Yeah, of course. Is it rough sometimes? <laughs> and you, you know, you want a bar of chocolate, but you're the slave to this diet because you know, mm -hmm. I need this. It's good for me. Mm -hmm. And so for a while, sometimes it does feel like yeah. you're not That's so right. free, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, but slave to righteousness. I think when you know something, you long for that yeah. thing, mm -hmm. you long for it. And it's a daily, like we talked about this daily battle within yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. I think that's an excellent point, though, because I think if I'm if I'm left free to just to my own devices, mm. it's going to be bad. <laughs> it's going to be really bad. You know, I need something that that I am tethered to, but that I choose. You know, that that Christ is not forcing this on you. Mm. Choose. I see. You know what? That is better. Mm. I, the law has shown me my need for you, mm. and so I do want to tether myself to that. Mm. So look, we'll go to the end now. If you have six twenty-three, Brittany. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Oh, so that, that's it, sums it up now. We see that the wage of sin is death, but the free gift of life is through Jesus Christ our Lord. So that's 
you know, you see that, that, that's a guy that's so awesome, I want to be a slave mm -hmm. to him. <laughs> I want to follow that mm -hmm. and not something else. Mm -hmm. You know, and really, I, I, I do want to highlight that I think a lot of times we just think, man, let's just throw the law out. Let's mm -hmm. just get rid of it. Let's just dump it out. But, but Paul is saying, no, we need to hang on to it. Let, let's all jump, let's do a little bit of an exercise. Let's all jump to Romans 12. And Romans 12 is extremely long, so we're not going to, it's not extremely long, but it's too long to just read through. <laughs> but I do want us to skim through it and just, Paul is seemingly offering now, you used to be this way, you used to be slaves to sin, but now this is what happens when you, when you are in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Look at the transformation that happens. Now. So if you just see anything, he's all kinds of qualities in there that, that, um, that you see that, that, that what happens when we are kind of transformed when we're close to Jesus. Is I it? see here, show mercy. What's another one, John? Romans 12. Is Romans 12, yeah. Uh, be yeah. sincere as, as you go through. Do you, anyone else see anything else? Be honest. Be honest. Cling to what is good. And, and even continues, do not repay anyone evil for evil. Mm -hmm. Don't take revenge. I mean, there's all kinds of things that like... It's, love each other. Yeah, like love that. each other. I mean, it's just it's just like a big transformation that mm -hmm. we see in in a human being when you come to Jesus Christ, that it's not just, well, you used to follow this law, now you follow another one. Mm -hmm. it's, like, it's even against human nature. It's just, mm -hmm. One of them is here, leave, live at peace with everyone. I can't do that. That's not, mm -hmm. like, within me, I don't have the power to do that. Clearly, I must be, mm -hmm. you know, kind of serving someone else, mm -hmm. attached to someone else. And, you know, that's what I love about th these studies that we're doing, that it's always, it's law and other things, but it's always Christ. Mm -hmm. Christ is always at the center of it. And I think mm -hmm. without it, you know, we, we get lost. So I wonder if we can talk about because look we, we're all we're all Christians here if we can talk about what what kind of transformation do you experience when you come to Jesus what what happens in your own personal how does it affect your daily life how do I see this lived out you know I think one of the things that struggled me a lot was you know doing away with the law thing again yeah. um, you know before I was a Christian there's certain things where in my neighborhood it was acceptable mm. dishonoring your parents or uh, or cursing or, or uh, doing bad at school. It was the normal thing. Yeah. You know, it was the normal thing. But the thing is that when the Bible comes along and it tells you your mistakes, that, mm. you know, you shouldn't treat your friends this way, you shouldn't right. treat your parents mm -hmm. this way. Yeah. Then, then you know what's mm -hmm. true and what's right and what's wrong. Right. You know, and so for me, it just um, helped me realign to what, what God intended me to mm. be. Mm. So that's my point. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, is it something that, what, what's what's a fruit that I that I can see born in my own life that you know it, I wonder if we have any examples of just man you know <laughs> I, I used to I used to be like this but you know what I found out that you know, patience right patience mm -hmm. patience That's is a huge one, one for yeah. me coworkers you know different <laughs> things go on and you yeah. say man this is beyond me yeah. to just take a deep breath and you know deal with how would how would Jesus deal with this situation mm. and you know when you ask yourself that question. And you really try to be in tune with what he would have you do. It changes everything. Yeah. It changes everything. And you look at that person and as frustrated as you might be, you say he loves them. Right. Mm -hmm. right. So will I. And I'll take a moment and I'll treat them the way I would want to be treated. Right. And maybe when I look at the law, I say, you know what? I'm not much better than them. <laughs> I'm not yeah, any better than that's them. That's the truth. Yeah. Right. Definitely. Right. Definitely. Cool, Brittany. I wonder if you can give any examples of what's a, what's an everyday example of just transformation in Jesus. Um, I think when a lot of times when we're going through difficult times in our life it's it's really easy to to get angry yeah. um, with you know God or the, the church around us or anything like that but when um, when you turn your faith to God yeah. um, you realize that you know he puts puts us through these these things so that we can grow in him mm -hmm. um, and that we, so we can grow closer to him mm -hmm. and and hopefully in the end that we can you know turn out to be a, a brighter light for him so yeah right. I think no matter where we look in the world, whether it's work or home or anywhere else, we find that there, there are troubles, there are frustrations, but mm -hmm. something almost outside of this world in Jesus that we can turn to for strength and mm -hmm. to rejuvenation and transformation. And continuing this thing on, on fruits, let's look at Romans 7, Romans 7, 4, where Paul talks about, uh, talks about this very issue that we're talking about. Whoever has it, just go ahead and read it. So my dear brothers and sisters, this is the point. You died to the power of the law when you died with Christ. And now you are united with the one who is raised from the dead. As a result, we can produce a harvest of good, good deeds for God. Wow, I love, I, was that the NLT? Yeah. I love that translation. Now, this is the point. <laughs> that highlights that really well. 
So the point is we, we, we died in the law, but, but not just for no reason, mm -hmm. you know, and that's why I think going back to this cheap grace, mm -hmm. get out of jail free, mm -hmm. do whatever you want. It's, it's for a reason. God is re if God is the creator mm -hmm. and we come back to him, we, we are being recreated mm -hmm. so that we can bear fruits for him. And, and I love what John 15, 5 has to say. If we can jump there. It talks about the same exact thing about what it means and, and how, how I as a human being can go about bearing fruit for God. Who's got it? John 15, 5? Yeah. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So there it is. There it is. <laughs> I mean, what's, John, I, I saw you give me a little glimmer. What, what are you thinking when you read that text? That as, as long as we can remain in him. I mean, when you look at the law, you, you look at how harsh it is and you go, there's a way I can be that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But this verse is saying, if we remain in Him, yeah. we're able to bear those fruits. Yeah, we're transformed. And, you know, a lot of times, you know, if to flip back to the other side, some, if we encounter people that are extremely legalistic, we get very proud of the things that we do and don't do. I don't do this and I do that, mm -hmm. and I'm very proud of that, and I'm more pious mm -hmm. and better than you. But Jesus says, apart from me, you can do nothing. Mm -hmm. Nothing. <laughs> so even the person, even the things that, if I'm now following the law better, if I'm now a better person, I can't even, like, take credit for that, you know? <laughs> like, because it's just Christ yeah. doing it in me. And it's just really, like... You see how the gospel just like flattens everything, you know, that, that it's just no one is better than anyone else now. Because even the people that are good are just doing it because God is in them doing it for them. So, you know, I, I, this notion that sin, sin is against the law, like you said, John. And if sin is lawlessness and God is love, then the law is fulfilled through love. And we'll do one last verse through Romans. If we could just jump there. Whoever gets there really quickly, Romans 13, 8, and then we're going to have to get out but I think it just kind of sums up everything. Who's got it? Owe nothing to anyone except for your obligation to love one another. If you love your neighbor, you will fulfill the requirements of God's law. Boom. Mm -hmm. I fulfill the law. I love my neighbor. <laughs> we have summed it up there. All right, well, we've got, to thank, uh, we've got to close it up here. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for joining us at home. And remember, whenever you think of the law, think of that verse that we just read. Love is the fulfillment of the law. And if you'd like to contact us, please visit our website at www.sabbathschoolu.org. That's sabbathschoolu, the letter U, dot org. Remember, the goal of Bible study is information and transformation. It's for the head and for the heart. For Sabbath School U, I'm Sergio. We'll see you later.